Today we continue with our class Women's Guide to Practical Halacha. <coughs> we start with the Sefer Chofetz Chaim. And uh, today topic, uh, big topic is the same. Uh, Toilas for the victim's benefit. So the Toilas is uh, for a constructive purpose. Accusation against the base Din. <laughs> if one witness a crime which um, which uh, subsequently came before the base Din, rabbinical court, and the accused was acquitted of any wrongdoings, it is uh, forbidden to voice criticism of the base Din's ruling. Okay, so very interesting, right? The person was a, a witness, something happened, and the case was brought to base Din, and as we know, in the base Din, we need uh, some specific proofs or uh, two witnesses, right? So sometimes, okay, they cannot uh, convict a person, right? So if he was acquitted. One must uh, assume, so, okay, so it is forbidden to voice criticism of the Bayesian throne. One must assume that the court com comprised of the Torah scholars has done its best to ascertain the facts according to the methods prescribed by Halacha. There is a testimony of uh, two valid witnesses. Right, and has ruled that according with the Jewish law as detailed in Shulchanah. So that there is not only, not only two witnesses, there must be kosher witnesses, Shomer Shabbos witnesses. If they're not Shomer Shabbos, it's like they're not there, right? And it must be only men. I mean, in some cases, we allow more women and minors, but otherwise, uh, you know, most of the business laws, others, only, only men. Okay. Kosher men. If one was the sole witness to the crime, then the testimony is invalid, no matter how convincing he uh, asks his argu ar argument. So, as, uh, as we said before, a, a single witness uh, not, is not allowed to testify in a base deal, right? Because it's a pure Loshan Hara, why we cannot do anything based on his uh, testimony. Furthermore, uh, one must come to terms with reality, that hum, uh, humans are limited in their ability to determine and carry out absolute justice. And ultimately, it is Hashem's power to, reg, to correct the social injustice. Okay, so the person says, how is it possible? So if there are no two witnesses and we did not warn the person, how is it possible to, to, to perform the justice? And uh, uh, the answer is that there is Hashem in the world and he's going to do whatever needs to be done. So don't uh, don't worry and don't lose your sleep uh, over it. Continue. Certainly one who loses court case cannot possibly be objective in his evaluation of the based in ruling. Right? The practice of raising questions as to the competence of the based in or accusing judges of bias a blend uh, uh, slender. Okay, so let's do this uh, piece again. We're going to explain. Certainly one who loses the court case cannot possibly be objective in his evaluation of the Bayesian ruling. So why, why, why what does it mean? So when, when uh, each um, each side is going to the court, they, they're sure they're going to win. So it comes as a big surprise for to any side that, that they, they're, they're losing. Right, so of course the person is very frustrated, and he's biased. Of course, how could I lose uh, my case? Everything was corrected because of the based in was biased. Uh, they they like that person. They didn't like me because of this, because of that. Right. Uh, the practice of raising question as to the competence of the based in, right, uh, is um, uh, accusing the judges of bias. Blinton Hatsar's uh, uh, Shemra, right? Slender. Continue. Nevertheless, if one suspects that uh, the ruling was the result of error in a legal process, he could seek the advice of rabbinical authority and ask that, in, uh, he, uh, that he investigate the matter. So, one of the rules of, of the based in, and one of the reasons why the based in is the second, okay, let, let's say I, I, I'm aware of only one reason. Why the base din is not is not uh, is not allowed to preside on uh, on Shabbos or Yom Tov because you are obligated to write down your decision like uh, all of the and uh, if uh, one of the litigants ask uh, you are obligated to, to write down all of the facts and uh, how why you you came to this conclusion and this uh, litigant one of the side can take it to to a different court to a different rabbi 
and ask him to evaluate that there is a, that's a, that's a Jewish uh, uh, way, right? So, and uh, it's possible, very, very possible that the, the, the judge, the base in uh, that, uh, that you went to actually overlook things. It's possible. Well, humans, right? Maybe they did not know some things. Maybe they did not uh, take into consideration other things. So there is no problem. So that's uh, <clears throat> that's why the, the, there is no problem. But don't 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 speak uh, badly about them. Just take it quietly to another way. Let them evaluate. Okay, we stop here. All right. So we continue. Um, Woman's guide to practical halacha. Here and we are on a section. One second. Tevelas Kelim, okay. So Tevelas Kelim, actually I did it today, believe it or not, uh, uh, an hour ago, Baruch Hashem. The Tevelas Kelim, and uh, I did uh, plastic, right? As, as I said before, we put the table everything, of course, without blessing, okay. <clears throat> okay, continue. <clears throat> so next section is of the last thing uh, that, that we discussed was the electrical appliances, and we... And we said if if it's possible to to remove uh, like uh, some parts like uh, that, that touches the food that's what you must do right i, I would say the best example would be um, the crack pot like slow, slow cooker okay and so um lead you you can take and insert you can take and uh, the rest is uh does not uh, touch uh, the, the food okay or as we said you, you can uh, uh, disassemble and then assemble. In this case, you would not need to take it to to make uh, in any way. Okay, so let's see. Disposable utensils. There is general discussion in the poskim about disposable utensils. Many feel that uh, even if the material is one of the uh, that would uh, require to be la, metal or glass, the fact that um, that will be disposed or, uh, after it is used reduces the importance and therefore does not require to be long. This applies to cans, glass jars, uh, and bottles, and disposable al aluminum pans. Um, some decide, the, some, some state, that if one decides to reuse uh, them, to, to use the item, then uh, it does require to be long before the second use. Others are of the opinion that uh, it attain its status, attain the status of utensil only from the second usage, and since that is done by a Jew, tevila is not necessary. However, if uh, however any utensil that is not disposable, a required tevila, may not be used even once before uh, it is stolen. Uh, there is a common misconception that uh, utensil may be used once. That's that's a famous one. Um, uh, once uh, before to, uh, toweling, but in truth it must be toweled before use. Okay, so let's do this from the beginning and we're going to explain a lot of information. So we're talking about disposable utensils. So of course we're not uh, talking about uh, plastic plates, right, and uh, plastic forks, but uh, something that uh, that man made of uh, a glass that uh, does require to be or metal, okay? So let's see. Um, there is great discussion about scheme about disposable utensil. Many feel that even if the material is one uh, that would normally require to be metal or glass, so you have a glass jar, right? Uh, you ate pickles, right? So you have jars, so you, you wash it and you use for something else, right? So, okay. The fact uh, that it was uh, that it will be disposed after it uh, eat. Uh, after it uh, after it is reduced the, its importance and therefore does not require to be lost. so that's that's the famous question the famous question is uh, like uh, how can you buy pickles or uh, like uh, any jar of food right, Be, right? because uh, it, it is put into into glass jar it's made, made by non-jews so the, the answer is, is here because it is um, they, they sell you the pickles they don't sell, sell you uh, jar, right? Jar, of course, they it's included in the price of the pickles, but but you buy you're not buying the jar unless it's a fancy schmancy jar. So you're not buying jar, you buy actually the the pickles or whatever is in peppers, whatever is in there, isn't there, right? So 
is uh, so this jar is like a wrapping right like if we can draw this such a parallel so you're going throughout so and most of the people they, they do throw out sometimes you keep for i don't know for some some uh, some uses but uh for most of the people it is uh it is disposable right so but if it's not disposable we're going to see okay <clears throat> So and uh, so uh, and it's reduced importance and therefore does not require to be long. okay? Because it's not important. It's not it's not it's not considered to be utensil by by itself, right? So if I buy, um, for example, glass jar for preserves, so those you must uh, you um, you must uh, toggle, right? For sure, because it's not for for single use. I mean, I, I don't know how you, you can use it for, for many many years. Like uh, the very good quality, right? And the leads and everything. So those you you must know, right? <clears throat> uh, this applies to cans. I'm not sure if somebody would use cans for what. I'm not sure. Okay, but I guess possible. Uh, cans, jar, uh, glass jars. So glass jars. So some 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 sometimes like uh, people would would use like uh, like uh, from. Uh, coffee glass jar right like fancy schmancy coffee and uh, you, you use for storage for sugar or other things i mean good good quality so yeah so it's like uh, uh this uh, this case this applies to cans glass jar and and bottles so bottles i'm not sure if somebody would use for a long time but maybe okay so we're, we're talking about glass bottles so plastic bottles if you want to like you reuse you you buy a gallon of water and then you pour into Model, there is no problem because it's plastic. We're talking about glass. Uh, and uh, I think the most popular one is a disposable aluminum pens. So it is it is disposable. I mean, uh, uh, if you like, if you if you if if you did uh, I don't know like chicken in there or fish or something, but if you warm up challah, right? So we warm up challah in this. Uh, this disposable it, it is clean I mean, uh, maybe a few few crumbs or something so you just uh, rinse it and that's it it is absolutely clean there's no problem right so the the, the question arises so it looks like uh, this aluminum uh, aluminum disposable aluminum pans is no, no longer disposable you actually wash it you're actually rinse it so what to do right good question some say that if one decides to reuse the item so as uh, this uh, as we just said example then does does require to be la before the second use so first use is uh, is uh, <clears throat> you you can use because it is presumed uh, disposable but i would say that if if you have intention not to throw this uh, aluminum uh, pen for example right so it's not disposable for you for the to to begin with so even the first time you can end use so we're going to give different solution does not say in the book but we're going to give solution others of the opinion that uh, it attained the status of utensils only for the second usage okay right and since it was done by a jew the tevila is not necessary so i mean that's uh, i never seen uh, this opinion to tell the uh, the truth, but uh, I mean it's it's very cute. So let let's see. Let one more time. So others say no. Uh, first, you first use is free, right? Because it's disposable. And uh, second, if you want to use a second time, so it becomes uh, like uh, only then you need the tevila. But since it was a, a Jew converted from disposable into utensil, so it was made by a Jew. So in this case, you you not uh, you not obligated to do tevila. I mean, uh, it's very interesting. I'm not sure. Unfortunately, it does not say who said it. Okay. But there is a third opinion that is uh, that we're going to provide later. However, any utensil that is not disposable. Okay, no, stop here. No, no you don't. So the, the other thing is, uh, again, like uh, to, uh, to fix it, right? So to do it yourself. So what, what do they do? They, they say like if it the disposable utensil you crush like you, you cut the corners because it's uh right you, you cut the corners like crush them and then uh, and crush the side and then undo it so like fix it it was broken and you fixed it so now it, it is done uh, fixed by a jew so you can use it for multiple times and i guess in combination with this opinion again i'm not sure whose opinion is it but uh, 
according to two opinions, I guess you can use this uh, disposable utensil. But I, I did see, like uh, as I said, I, I always go to the mikve, to a towel, and sometimes people do not want to, and, and I know for sure. If, uh, if we don't offer them to, to go to Togo, they're not going to do it. So sometimes uh, it's on my way, so I'll do it for, for other people. There is no problem. Right? Uh, so I've been to the Mikva many times, and I see women came uh, would go to the supermarket. It's, it's by, by the supermarket. So they come out of the supermarket with, with a stack of uh, this aluminum trays, and they, they would uh, towel. I'm not sure, I never asked them, but I never talked to them. So, are they, are they going to use one time or more than one time? Right, so because there is one or opinion, a stricter opinion, right, the, the stricter opinion that uh, since it is uh, aluminum, so you must uh, toggle, right? So, I mean, we would go by that, it would be too much. It would be too much, but uh, some, some people do that, that's what they do. So, she comes from the supermarket, told them, and, uh, and that's it. Very interesting. Um, continue. However, any utensil that is not disposable are required to be one. So, this, again, glass or metal, right? Okay. So, if you want to do everything, it's very commendable, but not necessary. Um, so, and one may not use the, even once before the, it is toggled, right? Um, Tabled. And I'm not sure where this misconception came from. Toggled. The truth, uh, it, 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 I, I haven't seen in halacha like uh, this leniency. Who said it? You, you can do one, one time. I'm not sure. Maybe he said it. Maybe I missed it. But, uh, but some people have this uh, misconception. So they, they buy things like, let's say, before Shabbos, and they don't have time to tell. So they say, no, we're going to use it one time. But I, I would say it's my, my personal uh, approach. If you use it one time, you're going to forget. What are the chances? I mean, if you're not very organized person, and most of the people not organized people, right? So they're going to forget, and they use it second time and third time and many many times. Continue. There is a mis the, there is a common misconception that tells them maybe use once before toggling, but in truth it must be told before use, right? So okay, so we send that. Continue. Utensil purchase uh, for resale. The requirement to total utensils is relevant only for those utensils that are used for food. If one buys utensils from a non-Jew in order to, uh, to sell them to others, they do not require to be allowed. So, um, uh, so here is a little, um, it's a little interesting case. So if it's packaged, if, if I buy something like, let's say, I... Um, I sell glass containers, like if it's packed, if it's in a package, of course, I'm not going to open it and, uh, and to table them, right? Total them, of course not. But uh, maybe the, he's talking about like if something like uh, open, like uh, maybe some antique, right? They, they buy, I don't know, some, some antique uh, things, like, uh, what is it? Um, silver spoons, let's say, I don't know. So, so a, a person might, my, my things, uh, since I'm buying from Judy, it's his, but uh, he, he still must uh, total it. Okay. Continue. The utensil purchases gifts. Many times one will buy a gift can, consisting of food. There is, <laughs> there is a range of metal glass dish uh, or plate. Some can say that the giver is not obligated to total the utensil beforehand because it is not uh, intended for food but rather uh, to be given as a gift. Uh, let's continue reading. Moreover, if the giver towel it, the tevila must be done over by the recipient. Others maintain that um, a receiver does not need to towel uh, your utensils again. Uh, preferably the utensils should not be toweled, and the recipient must uh, be made aware of the utensils required tevila. A common example is found in uh, Mishloach Manos, given, a, uh, given in a utensil required to be loved. Upon receiving food in a utensil that is not told, one may eat uh, from, uh, from the dish and afterwards told before using it again. Okay. 
So maybe misconception came from here. I'm not sure. So all right. So let's let's do it again, and we're going to explain it. So also, I think it's very practical situation. So it says many times one will buy gift consisting of food that is arranged on a metal glass dish. Okay, some uh, uh, food basket or something, right? But uh, but it's not like in a basket uh, uh, from um, from the wood basket, right? Or a plastic basket. Those uh, there is no problem. But uh, it's actually it's some metal plate, right? Or glass plate, right? So sample schemes say that the giver is not obligated to toll the utensil beforehand because it is not um, is not intended for food so i so if if you buy from from a store the gift basket of course you're not going to undo it and then go towel and uh, then try to arrange it again it's mission impossible right so you you give uh, that uh, that that person as a gift right and let them travel it okay so okay so but uh, but but here is a uh, uh, explanation that it was not uh, it was not intended as a, as a utensil for food but actually like a, uh, for like a, for arrangement for for decoration purposes which is interesting so for decoration purposes you're not obligated at all okay so but rather is given as a gift so I, will, I guess decoration purposes is a good better explanation moreover uh, the giver if the giver told it, told it so if the giver the, the, the one who gives let, let's say if a person does this arrangement uh, by himself the tigla must be done over by the recipient so now he gets i'm not sure uh, actually you know I, i'm not sure why why it said that because if it it belongs to a jew and he gives to, to another Jew, I don't think uh, we need uh, any toggling. Okay. Uh, others maintain that the receiver does not need to toggle. Utensil again. Right. Continue. So, okay, that's that's a more common opinion, I think. Preferably, the utensil should not be toggled. Should not be toggled. And the recipient must be made aware of the utensil uh, required to be locked. So meaning what? So if, if that person wants to use that utensil, if he wants to use it as decorated for decorative purposes, no problem. But if you want to use this plate and eat from, or store your food, the fruits, whatever you want to do, yes, you must store it. So just tell that the person. A common example found Mishloach Manos, so this gift that, that, that we do give on Purim, right? Uh, given utensil that required to be locked. Okay. So some like uh, if if it's uh, more, more than thirty dollars, fifty dollars, they they would make it like uh, look better, of course, in some kind of dish or some kind of tray, fancy schmancy, of course, yeah. Um, upon receiving food in the utensil that was not all, one may eat from the dish and then afterwards table uh, eat before using it again. So I guess. Uh, so I guess that uh, this is the leniency where the leniency came from, but here I, I would say it's it's an exceptional situation. So this uh, um, this person was, was given this plate as um, uh, like uh, this this plate was uh, was used for as a for decorative purposes is is, is a means to transport this gift to him. Right, and then uh, after after he ate from this plate, he decided now I want I want to use this plate uh, going forward. Yeah, so that's uh, I guess why this is leniency. Okay. Next one is procedure. By the way, any questions before we continue? We'll continue so because, because we're going to procedure. Bye -bye. Yes, go ahead. What about uh, utensils that are not only originally meant to be used as, uh, as with food, meaning like for example we have like a, I don't know like a flower pot or whatever, then we want to use it as a jar. Do we have to do we have to do the on this before we do? As 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 a jar for what? For uh, for cold water, storing cold water for drink or? Yeah, for drinking. Exactly. So in this case, yes. So in initially no because uh, the. The, the primary use of this uh, um, like uh, flower, flower waste is uh, to, to store flowers, let's say, right? 
and then you you decide you know what uh, I'm I'm going to use it for uh, for for to store water for whatever reason, right? So yes, so in this case, yeah, you, now you convert it to different uh, usage. So you you're going to use it for food. Yes, you would need to towel it. Yes, it's glass. It's uh, it's perfect example. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah, you're welcome. Before we continue, okay, no question. So we're going to procedure, right? So how do we do it? When the tensile is submerged, the water must completely surround it on all sides at the same time, right? Um, one um, one must release the tensile completely for one moment so that uh, the water can reach uh, in every spot. Many microwaves supply basket with holes in it uh, with, um, in which to, to place the items. This allows the water to enter it from all sides uh, and there is no fear of dropping the tensile. Okay, so that's uh, that's actually in the microwave that, that I used. So that, that, there is a, there is no like basket, but it's a, like milk crate, milk crate, right? So you put, a, a, first of all, it's faster. So a few times I, I came like, there are like two families, but they have so much, Baruch Hashem, they have so much to toil. So, so like, like some kids were unpacking, put it in one milk crate, another milk crate, and then I also had a lot, so Baruch Hashem. They took like sometimes take a very long time, but without this milk crate, without this basket, it would take forever if you're trying to do one utensil at a time. Right? And plus you, you don't have to like wet your hands if you put there. Like uh, it's it's deep. I don't know how many inches inch deep. So it's enough uh, for for water go all, all, all the way over, right? Uh, all the utensil, and you take out and your your hands are clean, uh, wet, not not wet, dry. Very interesting. So that's uh, that's what we do. But uh, I mean, if you go somewhere else and you, you don't have this basket and you have only a few utensils, okay, there is no problem. But uh, but you have to let it go under the water, right? Or like. Uh, um, like uh, hold with one hand and then uh, the grab grab with another hand, like l let it go a little. Of course, it's not going, uh, it's not going to break or something, but you have to be careful. Continue. Uh, this uh, so uh, some some uh, some mi mikvas allow the uh, supply a basket with holes. It's like sh shopping basket. Okay. Um, to, to place their items. This allows water to enter from all sides and there is no fear of dropping a tensile. Okay, that's uh, sometimes actually that's uh, it's not always true as well, right? Why? I, I saw like a few times uh, it was an elderly lady and, and she tried to like uh, uh, she put a few a few, a few uh, pots in there. So I, I think it she's elderly right and 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 she bent in into the mikvah and put it and with the water right it's and especially it's deep it's it's not so easy to, to get out i mean for for a man it's not it's no problem but for elderly yes so she actually let it go and they had to call the guy to to take it out i mean it's uh, the, the mikvah is pretty deep it's uh, i don't know how many feet maybe uh, three feet maybe even three feet yeah maybe three feet so i mean <laughs> So uh, they had to call a guy, okay, um, right? So, so we have to be careful. One must make sure that uh, that the what? Uh, that the utensils uh, on the floor of the basket are raised a bit to allow the water to, to reach uh, uh, to reach them. So usually the, these baskets, like it's a, like usually they wet. From, from the previous uh, thing, so they're not exactly like like in a class when when you um, when you dip it, so they, they like uh, they, they would kind of come a little up, so that's uh, that's a perfect for our case, right? So they will be lifted by by the water for for a second or two seconds, and then, then uh, the water goes into into the utensil. There is no problem, right? And or when when you have silverware, right? So you just shake it a little, and that's it. Okay, so continue. Sticker system labels, that's a big one. Uh, often there is a sticker system labels on the utensils. They must be removed as they consider chatzitza, 
separation between the water and the utensil. Sometimes it is necessary to use the agent to help remove the glue uh, that is still adheres to the item. If one has uh, tried uh, diligently to remove uh, the last bits of the label and, and is not able to, the utensil may be uh, immersed as is. So there are stickers sometimes, sometimes they would sell you, um, what do they sell? I'm not sure if, if you buy uh, in as a set, maybe they, they're not going to put on every plate a sticker, but I, somehow I think they do. Somehow, I'm not, I'm not sure why would I say so, but uh, many times, like if, if, it, uh, if I help somebody to, to go to the mikvah, I, say, I said, please, don't, don't call me until you, you're ready 100%. You have to remove all of the stickers. And sometimes they put such a good glue on uh, one of the stickers, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's not uh, you have to like uh, wash it with the warm water, you have to do like a baking soda or something like some, it's not, it's not so easy to remove, remove. You have this uh, like a uh, scraper or something, so you, you have to remove all of them. And the glue, glue is uh, the biggest problem. Again, if you use a uh, baking soda, it should uh, come off, come off. Okay, but uh, but you're not allowed to, uh, to total this with uh, with the, with, the, with the glue. Okay, so the linens, so be, be, why, why, why is that? Because as we as we said, it's, it's considered chatzitza. So chatzitza is separation. So same is uh, with, uh, when, when a woman goes to the mikvah, there is a, it must be no chatzitza, right? Uh, so same is here, there must be no chatzitza, no, no separation. So the water has to, has to reach everywhere. So, and if per person, uh, uh, Clean and clean and clean and did not uh, uh, take out the, 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 all of the glue. So if the glue is outside, so after the fire there is no problem because you don't eat from that. So food does not touch. But if it's some some inside, that's uh, it must remove. Why? Because initially it's going to after a few washes it, 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 it's going to come off. So that's uh, that's the problem. Continue. Toweling by a child. A child below the age of bar of bas mitzvah is not believed. To have told any utensil properly, right? It's from Shulchan Aruch. Therefore, a child of the age of, uh, of that age should not be sent to the mikvah to toll on his own, right? Sometimes, like uh, there is a line of people, and some people get very agitated, and they need uh, they, right? Uh, they they would rush other people, like. Uh, so and if if this uh, poor child would come and uh, and somebody would yell at them, so maybe they're not going to toil at all, right? So you never know, you never know. Or he he got scared, she gets scared and just come home and say, yeah, I told it. So yeah, they don't believe them. However, an adult uh, is an adult who watches uh, watches the child to ensure that the tevila is performed correctly. The child is permitted to perform. The actual tevila, so there is no problem. I mean, uh, because there is uh, supervision. As I say, I saw many, many, many families would come with the father. It's father's time, and uh, they, uh, he, they, were, everybody would help to unpack, to take the stickers out, and put in uh, these new heads, right? So, of course, children can do it, but I mean, usually father does because, as I said, it like uh, um, when they're empty, there is no problem. But when it's uh, full of water, and if you to put uh, to uh, two or three parts in there, it's very heavy. I mean, a uh, child cannot handle it. Uh, the last one, bracha. Bracha is recited before tevila, as for all mitzvahs. Uh, if one uh, one utensil is told, um, so blessing is, I'm we're skipping, uh, al tevila keili. Keili is in uh, singular, right? Uh, if two or more are being told, uh, bracha al tevila keilim. Kelim meaning uh, in plural. Uh, a pot that is covered, pot, a pot and its cover are considered one, one utensil. Therefore, al tevilas keli is recited. Yeah, right? if you have a pot and a cover, it's uh, it's one one utensil. I mean, uh, maybe you you can buy a cover by itself, but it it came as a set, so it's one utensil. And uh, it does not say here, but uh, we're going to. Uh, to remind, so even if you have several utensils, you have 100 utensils, you say only one blessing. So you you you, you take one uh, one utensil that for sure required utensils, no maybes. 
right? You say a blessing on that, and then uh, you continue to learn. And try not to talk. So as, as I said, the biggest toll in my life was uh, almost three hours. Almost, almost three hours. I don't know if I said it or not, so... Okay. It's very, like, we had the full car, full minivan of uh, boxes, and we have to wrap and rewrap and take out. That was a big project. Okay. Any questions on what we said? Okay. So, okay, if, 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 if you want, you can ask later, no problem. So, next topic, Baltashlis. That's a big one. That's especially in rich countries. That's a, that's a reason why, number seven, why I don't go to weddings, all these things. Baltashlis. It's my, my personal thing. The prohibition. The prohibition of Baltashlis has uh, its, source, uh, its source in Torah, right? Although, uh, so ba Baltashlis is wasted. Wasting, right? Okay, I, they do not translate, but he's going to um, explain. Um, the prohibition of Baltashlis has a source in the Torah. Although the verse refers to the cutting down the food, food trees, the prohibition extends to any situation in which one wastes food or causes another item to go to waste. Right? They, they bought, I don't know, whatever they, they throw out. Like, it costs money, right? So again, when a person wastes food or other things, that's a, that's a big problem. Uh, the meaning of the word uh, tashlis is to destroy. Okay, here we go, destroy. Okay, so destroy waste, but uh, usually when uh, uh, bal tashlis, we, we say about the food or like usually about the food. Okay, therefore, if one has a valid reason, to dispose of something. It is not considered destructive and does not consume baltashlis. For example, one may throw out the leftover of food that is clearly will not be eaten by anyone since storing it uh, for a long period of time until it rusts is costly and inconvenient. If the, food, uh, if the food has been partially eaten and is considered inedible in the eyes of others, one is permitted to throw it out. So, okay, so let's see. Um, let's do this again and we're going to explain. Um, therefore, if one has a valid reason to dispose something, right, it is not considered to be destructive and does not constitute baltashli. So, meaning if, uh, if you have, so some people, they worn, uh, wore, I don't know, suits or something, like only a few times. I mean, I, I think uh, sick people, but that, that's uh, that's what they do, right? Uh, and throw the shorts after three times, so they uh, wash two, two times. It's not white enough, and it's this enough, that enough, throw to the garbage. Okay, so that's a baltash list. Uh, for example, one who throws a leftover food clearly will not be eaten by anyone. So I'm not sure why somebody, I mean, if it's your family, so why you would throw out the food? I mean, if it's your family, why? I mean, if you if from from your friend, of course, or from somebody you, you don't know, of course you're going to throw out. That's that's normal. That's not bal baltashlis. I'm not going to eat after after my guest. But if uh, my wife left over something, my kids left over something. What was the problem, right? Okay. So, but if no nobody would eat it, and it's going to like for sure nobody would eat it. So you can throw out, but it's uh, wasted. So do less next, next time. Okay. Um, so one more time, for example, one may throw out the leftover, leftover food that uh, clearly will not be eaten by anyone. So let's say in this situation, uh, since storing it uh, for a long period of time until it rots, it's costly and inconvenient. I mean, in this case, yeah, why would you need it? Because uh, nobody is going to eat it for sure. So you can, you're allowed to throw out. If food has been uh, partially eaten, partially eaten, and is cons uh, considered inedible um, in the eyes of others, I'm not sure what would be example, uh, partially eaten, inedible. Um, I don't, sorry, I, I don't have an example. <laughs> Why, why, if it's partially eaten, why is it, is it inedible? I don't know. One is permitted to throw it out. Okay. So if it's like nobody is going to eat it, so you allowed to uh, to throw out. Likewise, uh, well, likewise, an object that that is broken, 
and it's not uh, worthwhile to repair it, may be thrown in the garbage. So like many times, like if, 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 if you try to repair something, it's going to cost you, I don't know, maybe 70% of the price. And is it going to work and how long is it going to work? You don't know. So it's better, it's easy, like cheaper and faster and uh, less headache to buy a new one. So in this case, yes, it's it's not uh, it's not Baltashlis. One who realizes that uh, uh, one who realizes that she owns clothing that does not uh, conf uh, conform with halacha may throw it away since it's considered a positive positive action, not destructive one. So that's uh, that's a very good uh, example. And uh, and we had a lady that that uh, not not one but uh, this specific lady that uh, I'm thinking about. So she was. Uh, um, so she had a lot of uh, disclosure, not not modesty. And then she found out about the modesty, and she asked, like uh, she did not. And uh, the job was also not uh, not very kosher job, okay. Uh, so she well, once she found out that it was not kosher, that's uh, she, it was a big tzedaka. So she quit it right, right away. She quit it, and she needed money, right? So she said, "Can I at least sell this clothing?" Right, so to just uh, just until I, I get uh, in the next job, and we said absolutely not. That was very modest. So even for a non-Jew, they're not allowed to to wear this clothing. She's modest, and Baruch Hashem, she burned it. Okay, it's just just making sure that nobody would get it. Baruch Hashem, or she cut it. No, no, she didn't. Cut it. She she cut it. She cut it in pieces, and thrown garbage. Yeah, Baruch Hashem. So in this case, it's not destructive because you. You're taking out the the sin from from this world, okay? You're not allowed to wear, and other people not wear, not allowed to wear. Okay. Continue. Next section: actions that are not baltashlis. There are many well-known practices that seem to be wasting food or uh, um, or items, but are permissible because they are valid reason destroying these things. Okay. So one more time: there are many well-known practices. That seem waste in food, okay, uh, or the items that are permitted, because there is a valid reason to destroy these uh, these things. A glass is broken under the chupa at uh, at the wedding to remind us of destruction of base and English. This is not considered baltashlis. So that, that's a that's a good example. So usually they they don't take. Uh, they don't take a uh, very expensive uh, expensive glass, so they, uh, right, you you buy cheap like uh, a glass in, uh, in dollar store. First of all, I, I think it's thinner, thinner, so it's easy to break. Otherwise, right, <laughs> and uh, so it's not uh, it's not uh, waste. When next one, when one loses uh, loses a uh, close relative or visit coisel after an extended period. Her garment is ripped um, to show sadness, right? Uh, okay, so that's uh, that's another thing, right? So um, um, when when we visit Koisa, I mean for for us, for people who are going uh, living in exile, it's every time, when every time, and not only Koisa, other other cities in or in Yehuda, um, right? Uh, so you have to rip uh, your garments, right? So as uh, as uh, as for as for deceased, right? So if somebody has to show die, dies in the seven close relatives, so a person has to, to, to rip all of the garments, right? So for, for a woman, it's only one garment, the outer garment, of course, it's not proper for her to rip other garments, but for a man, it's actually all of the garments, right? So of course, you, you cannot allow to, I mean, uh, you cannot uh, wear these garments unless, uh, uh, <laughs> I, I I saw that it's it's actually permitted to to rip the, the same garment twice, right? That that's why some sometimes so when when we go to Yerushalayim, I mean, right? So we have to I, I would uh, rip it I would take uh, the ripped uh, uh, a short and rip it twice. It's very interesting. like in different place, different place next to it. Okay, so that's uh, continue. When one, uh, okay, uh, Havdala, uh, we pour uh, extra wine uh, that spills over the, the sign overflowing blessing. It's actually from Mishnah Brah. So, um, 
uh, when we do have dal on wine or the grape juice, whatever we do, so there is a Mishnah uh, Bura says pour a little extra. How much extra? At least one drop extra, so it's like would be overflowing. It's like you know, that, that you want overflowing blessing, right? So, but even if you if you uh, that's my my personal thing. If if you uh, um, uh, um, fill it to the brim when when you're going to leave for sure. I mean, uh, you you're not robot like you 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 can't shake a little, so it go it's going to spill. And if you're not going to spill. Uh, and you 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 did not uh, uh, fill to the brim. If you follow the Torah, you get even the better blessing than this uh, overflowing all the wine. But uh, the tradition is uh, in many families they actually overflow. Okay, continue. Likewise, one may throw out Homer's food before Pesach. Uh, she need not be concerned regarding the prohibition of Baal Tashis. Of course, she tried like. Uh, um, try to like to to minimize the the food that that you're going to throw out. So what what are you going to throw out? The food that they cannot be stored, like some fresh uh, bread, or like pita or whatever you have. So uh, for example, if you sell almonds, so other things uh, like cookies or like you you're not obligated to throw. Just uh, just keep them, right? So like if you're going to throw only bread, so just just calculate. Uh, start. Start thinking one week in, in advance. So should, should I buy the whole pack of 12? Pitas or only five should be sufficient. Okay, that's very simple. Norka. Um, right, so, but but since you, for, for example, if some, some people do not uh, uh, sell hormones and that, that way we have actually tried to do it for, I think, five years or so. I mean, it, weren't, it, it was too much, too much, too much. Okay, so it's too much headaches. Uh, that's what I would say. It's uh, it's easier to, to sell. Okay, but uh, but it's possible. So in this case here, yeah, you would uh, throw out, the, but but we would give to our neighbors, the neighbors non non Jews. So you give them all of the packaged food, like uh, clothes, like uh, spaghetti, whatever whatever things that uh, was uh, sealed, and uh, the rest you would uh, throw out. Okay. Uh, next one up uh, after a psak. It can happen that someone errs and meets daily, and meet or vice versa. You remember our Thursday class? If one is told by a competent trap that uh, her food is none, uh, uh, none, nonetheless permitted, she should not throw away the food. She should eat it, confident that she found the proper halacha. That's uh, that's golden. If you just read, it's unbelievable. So let's uh, let's try to understand. Um, it can happen that someone airs and meets daily and meat and uh, daily with meat or vice versa. L let's say sim simple example as uh, as we said, somebody um, uh, cooked the chicken soup in uh, in uh, non binyamo pot, right? In the non binyamo da daily pot. So we said clearly. So after the fact, you are allowed to, to eat uh, chicken soup, but you must uh, kosher the pot. So, but but some people they would not uh, they would not learn this halachas, right? And they would uh, not ask rabbi, and they she would uh, would uh, she, uh, would want to go the stringent way. So, for, I mean, she would say according to all the opinions, not according to all the opinions. Right? In this case, it's a baltashlis, it's wasting of food. So, if food is allowed, why are you trying to be extra stringent, right? That's um, that's the thing. Okay, so. Continue. If one told by competent rap, so he knows what he's talking about, that your food is nonetheless permitted. Again, okay, pot is different story. Pot you have to caution, different story. But food is permitted. She should not throw away the food. That's it. So it's a baltash. It's, it's a waste. She should eat it, confident that she is found the proper halacha. That's it. So if proper halacha that you allow to eat food, don't be stringent. You can be stringent in many other ways, but uh, in this, it's don't. Okay, so next one is the Shemitah. So let me quickly check time, one second. Oh, time flew very fast, but... Okay, so let's do Shemitah. Every Jew living in Israel must be well versed in the laws of governing the purchase of the fruit and vegetables during the Shemitah year. So you're not allowed to buy uh, uh, from, uh, from Israelis, right? From, from the Jews, because Jews are not allowed to sell. Unless they import from uh, from different countries, that's 
So it's uh, okay. Otherwise, it is uh, difficult to avoid transgressing the prohibition of concerning buying, selling, and eating and dispose of its produce. Okay, so um, let's do from the beginning and we're going to explain. Every Jew living in, uh, in Israel must be well versed in the laws of gardening the purchase of the fruit and vegetable during the Shemitah year. Okay, during the Shemitah year, it's, it's seventh year. So you're not allowed to, to buy from the Jew. But if, even if you bought it, let's say it's a, I don't know, it was a partnership, this, whatever. It was, a, it was allowed to, or somebody gave it to you. Forget about buy, buying, right? Let's say somebody gave it to you. So there is a special holiness um, that, that is induced in this, uh, in, into this fruit. So you cannot just throw them out, right? So that's, uh, you, you have to treat them very, very carefully. Right? Otherwise, it's difficult to avoid transgressing the prohibition of concerning buying, selling, as we said, two issues. Eating, right? You have to right? eat also. I'm not sure what about eating. You have to wash your hands before eating this fruit. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I'm um, Disposing of, of its products. So if, if it's still edible, so you're not allowed to, to throw uh, to the garbage, right? So you have to live on the counter, let it rot. Yes. And then, uh, then you can dispose of it. Uh, some of these laws um, relevant for those living outside of Israel as well. So actually, like uh, we, uh, we've been to, uh, to, to Israel twice um, uh, during the Shemitah year. And uh, so, of course, we would not go to the market to buy. Of course, on, a, on, a, on, a, on the market, like... Uh, uh, you know, shuk, it's always much easier, uh, much cheaper, always, but we, we would not go only in supermarket. So supermarket is mehadrin, meaning there is a special strict supervision. It's not from Israel, from this, from there, maybe from some parts of Israel that maybe below the, the Dead Sea. I'm not sure. I'm, uh, I'm not sure about uh, um, how they treat that area. It's not part of the biblical uh, um, Israel. Okay, but uh, if you buy it from supermarket, you, you can be rest assured that it's good. Okay, so there, there is like Mechadrin supermarkets and you, you can count on them. Okay. Some of these laws are relevant to those living outside of Eretz Israel as well. Many times consumers will uh, notice the label on packaging, the packages of the fruits and vegetables to the right product of Israel. Okay. So it used to be where I lived like many, many years, maybe 20, maybe more than 20 years before, like uh, the tomatoes from Israel, but now they fly, they, they, uh, from, they flood from Mexico, from South America, from different countries. They flood some like markets, so this Israel is out. They cannot compete, like because uh, it is cheaper to, to bring from, from here than uh, all the way from Israel. Sometimes they grow, um, they grow during the Shemitah year, and maybe uh, it may not, not be eaten. So some we, we have to understand not all of the most of the Israeli like farmers they're not absorbent, so they do not care, right? So and they they would send uh, to export these uh, these fruits. Okay, so it's up, up, up to us uh, up to us to, to check. Furthermore, they may not be thrown out, and require special handling. As we said, we have to let it uh, rot. Once, um, once one has purchased this pr uh, product, she must consult Rav for further guidance. So I, I say, don't, don't buy Israeli food. Right. Okay. So I think we can check time. I think we can stop here, and we almost finished this book. Almost finished. Okay. So any questions on any topic, on this topic or any topic? Please. Anyone? Uh -huh. okay. okay. Yes, go ahead. Uh, yeah, in regards to this topic, uh, what's the proper way of disposing expired matzah? Expired matzah? Yeah. There is there, there is no. Uh, you, you mean uh, to throw out, or what's the problem? There is a way we have to. I mean, uh, matzah cannot go bad, 
And uh, there is one one of the products that cannot go go bad. So you 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 can always use a different uh, you uh, you can make uh, di different dishes, right? Why why would you want to throw out? You understand? So. Well, I have I have like this box of mat matzah from like 2015, and I don't know what to do with it. I mean, it's not going bad, but it's not like fresh anymore. It's like I don't know. I don't know what to do with it. I mean, uh, so if 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 you think it's it's not good, it's not edible. It's not edible. It's one thing, but uh, if it's if it's still dry, if it's still good, so you can cook it. It's like a cracker. Well, well, what can uh, I mean? Uh, if, if if there is no malt, you can eat it. So what what I would do? So I would do ma matzah bread. That's uh, that's the big thing, right? You you uh, uh, break it into pieces many pieces right then you uh, um pour like hot water like boiling water right a little then you add eggs then you add uh, whatever you want the mushrooms whatever you add, want and then fry it on, on a frying pan add salt and uh, all of the spices you want and it's actually delicious put uh, put maybe a few extra eggs and it's unbelievably delicious so that that's how we finish uh our uh, matzah, but sometimes, like, uh, uh, right, if you, uh, with, with leftover, what else you can do, like in general, I'm just giving the general advice to uh, everybody. So what else you can do uh, with matzah, you can do a matzah meal. You can grind it, whatever, with, uh, we have a, like a coffee grinder, but you, you can buy whatever. I mean, it was the cheapest, uh, the cheapest thing to buy, coffee grinder, and uh, you use it only once, uh, once, I don't know in a year right so you you make in uh, you make a matzo meal you make this uh, flour it's not flour it's called matzo meal and you can bake it uh, bake from it uh, on pesach and you can use it as uh, um as um, bread crumbs right if you want to fry fish you can use this matzo meal because you yeah, you're not uh, you're not allowed to, to use uh, regular bread bread crumbs so yeah, there is many use for matzo You're welcome. So, but, but if, 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 if you don't, don't feel good, if you think it's a smell, so it's funny, so yeah, throw out. There is no problem. But uh, I'm, I'm just saying in general. Yes, that's a little, a little funny because I don't know if some moisture kind of got into the box. It kind of smells like mold a little bit. So, okay, it, look, you're not, you're not allowed to, 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 to danger your health because of this food. I mean, so if if if, if it smells uh, like uh, suspicious for you, so just throw out. There is no problem. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What else? Anybody else have a question? Or we go straight to Daniel. Okay, Daniel, you on. So if, if anybody have questions, just raise your hand, and we're going to give you a chance. Okay. Go ahead, Daniel. Yeah, but I'm just just. Question like this: Can I throw it on the on the disposal? I I I said, look, look, in you know maybe 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 you know in order not to not to feel bad that, that you actually dispose of it, uh, go feed the, the, the birds. They're going to eat it. They don't care about mold. They, they would uh, love you very much. Or, or if you have uh, like fish or some like uh, to to feed fish, you can go feed fish or ducks or some like. Uh, all of the wild, wild birds they would enjoy it very much. Don't. So I that, that's what I, I would do. So we try not to not to waste anything, especially bread. So matzah matzah is actually bread, and it says uh, some, somebody who who is throwing out kazais of bread. So what is kazais? We said twenty eight grams. It's uh, one ounce approximately. So has to show the person is going to go broke, right? Poor. Right, because uh, bread is sustenance. So sometimes, and uh, like uh, I see on uh, in, in, uh, on all of this celebration, or even in a synagogue. So like uh, a few times, I went to Sudashlisha, and I saw how much bread they threw out. I was like, stop! I am never going to do it again, never ever. So it's proper to eat with, with the community. So I I would eat separately quickly. Like uh, I would study, 
like a break you know like uh, with minimum you would eat only minimum what is it 10, 10 minutes five minutes for your uh, Amazon and you go back to study that's it so but uh, I, I don't, I don't want to be the one that uh, that they buy so much bread or other food and they throw out in the guy I, I don't I don't want to be the reason you understand but other people do not care which is their own business okay so what else yeah, yes you're welcome. so okay. um so when someone dies without doing shuba and therefore has to reincarnate in order to do what he didn't do in his past life mm -hmm. is he said is he said to be known first for some time before reincarnating mm -hmm. or is he no, like no, no, the no. last stage no. For the soul when you already run out of chances to reincarnate mm -hmm. first of all we we, we have to un, un, understand so this uh, uh reincarnation is actually a big reward so me, meaning that, that the soul did a lot a lot a lot right and maybe one one or two things uh soul actually failed to do so that's uh that's what it is right i Otherwise, there is, when there is too too much to fix, what what is the chances that that this uh, soul in the next generation that goes lower, 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 there is is going to change to to fix? No, that it goes to gain on. You understand? But after after the the, the gain on, but uh, uh, that's uh, that's it. So it's possible that. Thank you. It's possible that uh, um, if if sentence is finished, so. Uh, it's one, one of big misconceptions. I'm not sure how is it possible. How people are uh, being so so stupid and naive at the same time, right? That they uh, they think that that they are going to go like uh, that the, the sentence is going to combine. Absolutely not. For each aware, for each thing, the, the person is going to go like on different levels of gain on and going to to to, to solve the sentence for each thing separately. It's not like, oh, he did uh, so, so many th uh, things, so we're, we're going to judge us once. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So we actually have discussion today. Uh, we, we don't have a clear conclusion, but we're going to see. So if person did same same Avera and he was warned by the witnesses one time, don't do it. Right? Don't do it. Don't do it. And he did it anyway. Okay. Um, and he did it anyway, so he's going to get set of lashes let's say he finished eight kizais or forbidden food right so forbidden fat let's say right and uh, and uh, he did it again he started doing it again and said no don't do it we just told you uh again warned so i think uh, i think he's going to get a second set of lashes but uh, we have to double check so meaning j just because a person like uh, um if if the, the the witnesses did not warn him second time and he was continue eating, eating, eating. So, like he he was going to get only one set of lashes. But if he was warned, like every time, so it's possible that he's going to get separate sets of lashes for each time that he did whatever he did. You understand? So, so it's not so simple. It's not so simple to get. So, but after a person uh, went to gain on, uh, let's say he did now, she did not do all of these things for which the soul must be destroyed, right? I mean, in uh, um, meaning seventh level, so for for which for weights and seed, for Michal Shabbos and for Hil Hashem. Let's say person did not do any any of it or did Teshuvah, so it's it's like he never did, right? Uh, so maybe he is going to she is going to uh, to to serve some not maybe for sure some sentence in the no, but otherwise uh, the the, um, the soul is free and goes to Ganeiden. That's it, right? That's it. So the, if if uh, so, meaning that there is nothing to correct. So after the gain on the bottom line, there is uh, that's it. So it's whether complete destruction or 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 Ganeiden. That's it. So this uh, this reincarnation is actually when person might do better in in the next try. So you, know, you understand. So or or person did not was not. Uh, did not grow up in a, in the right environment. So and 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 we see it uh, often, and people misunderstand because of their uh, lack of knowledge, right? The lack of, they do not understand what's going on. I give you this example. So sometimes, um, often, 
uh, these big rabbis do not have a big, uh, big, uh, big, uh, uh, big rabbis uh, as, um, as 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 children. Some are like average, like but not not as a giants. So uh, not as as their father. So and sometimes it's not only not uh, not giants, but actually apicorsim and very bad people. So and some not smart people, not educated people, let's put it this way. So they, they say that, 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 you know, why this son is like that? Because his father is faker, because mother is, uh, everybody say, say that she's tzaddik, but you know what, if, if she has a daughter like that, for sure she's not holy, right? For sure, uh, they, maybe they did whatever they did in the house, maybe they pretend to be holy, but they're not, all of these uh, stupid people, right? But uh, actually the opposite is true. Absolutely, up this is sure. So what? This uh, this all comes uh, to uh, to uh, to the court of heaven and said, "Look, Hashem, I did not do this, uh, but look, look, you you sent me to this to this uh, uh, atheist uh, parents, right? This communist, this I don't know, like low lives, right? So, so how could I, right? So I had no chance." So and uh, if, if they listen to the argument and see that the, the soul actually when uh, it's find out about truth, it's tried to to to, to get to close to Hashem. It was not easy. It was uh, the, this and that. Okay. So in this case, they are going to give chance, but it must be fair chance. Oh, it's it's because of the family. That's what you say. The only issue was family. I'm going to put you in the best family possible in Miyasherim. Right? There is a. Uh, neighborhood in Yerushalayim, yeah, the holiest of the holiest in the world, right? Uh, and the Miyasherim in, in the family of this biggest rabbi. Let's see, they don't, they never saw, saw their cell phone, right? I mean, uh, the, the smartphone. They never saw TV. They now no, never saw computer. They on, only know the only holiness. They go to yeshiva. They go back. Only like um, men in one room, women in another room. And only holy brothers, only holy sister, holy mother, holy father. Everybody is holy. Everybody is holy. And let, let's see how how you're going to perform. And this uh, uh, rotten soul. Guess what? It did not change. So this environment did not change. So we, we see that it was problem was not with uh, with uh, with environment. The problem was uh, with uh, with its rotten desires. So you, you understand. But uh, then uh, this family would get this embarrassment. This Shemirachem uh, daughter or son. So is it their pro pro uh, uh, fault? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. They like you. You have to look at other children. They how they came out. All those righteous, or daughter righteous, uh, sons of righteous. But this rotten apple. That's because he was uh, or she was a rotten apple from the previous reincarnation, right? So this argument, uh, it's not fair. Maybe you you give me another chance. So it actually was uh, not. I mean, uh, in in. Uh, in in uh, in the world of truth, yes, you would uh, you would uh, uh, I guess promise a anything, but uh, but the truth is when when you come here, so you maybe you're going to be exactly the same. So that's uh, that's the answer. Okay, it's a very good question. Oh, Thank you. Was, yeah, that was very scary. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, uh, so people must realize that they're responsible for their own actions. So don't don't blame society. Don't blame your parents. Don't blame you, anybody, right? So so you be holy, you personally be holy. That's it, right? Uh, 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 and how can you be holy? Uh, look at the uh, Rachel and uh, look at Leah. Look at uh, Rivka. That they were holy, right? Abraham was holy, right? Uh, Yaakov, despite the ace of all of this. Uh, all of the way we get Canaanites, right? Uh, his neighbors, he was holy, right? Uh, Joseph and his sons, right? We bless our sons. Uh, let me like um, Ephraim and Menashe. Ephraim and Menashe. So I mean, are they the holiest people who ever lived? Let's uh, let's uh, let's go. Let be like like Benjamin. Benjamin ne never seen. Ishai, son, uh, father of the David Hamelo, Never seen. So why, why don't we bless uh, our children with uh, with these two great uh, great tzaddikim, right? Who never sinned. They died only because it was uh, decreed on Adam Harishon to die. That's it. Period. Not because of their sins. So and now I just explain because these two Ephraim and Menashe, they were the only the, the, okay, okay, father. Father is at work. He's busy. He's running the he's a financial uh, viceroy. He's uh, the biggest uh, man in in the world, right? Uh, uh, he, he's busy with his economy, right? So they were at, 
in the, in the house by themselves, of course. Mother was there, but uh, the environment, the wicked of the, the lowest of the lowest. And despite of that, they turn out to be holy people, right? So don't, don't blame on anybody, but on, on yourself. Okay, of course, it's easier to be holy in Miyasharim, but still uh, you can be holy wherever you are. Okay. So someone else uh, has a question, uh, but, but I believe her microphone is not working, so I'm going to yeah, read it out loud for her. Yes, yes, go ahead. So the question is, the question is about leftovers. Um, so it goes like this, when the wife is in the state of Nita, mm -hmm. uh, in a case where she left some food, how should the procedure be if the husband wants to eat uh, those leftovers? Mm -hmm. that's, a that's, uh, that's a very good question. So in, in olden days, uh, they, they would not eat uh, because, um, because impurity was much more great, uh, much greater. So in uh, impurity as such, that it says actually, Shohanor is that the woman should, in those days should not go to to the synagogue and look, look at the Torah. Why? Because she can uh, uh, send this impurity to the Torah, Has right? That's, uh, that's one of the reasons that uh, normal people have a separation between men, men and women. And some of these um, modern Orthodox, so what they do, they, they take Torah and go to the women's section. That's, uh, uh, when, when, when you see that, it's time to run from, from that place. So a few, few things that you must, they uh, check in the shul and actually it was instructed someone uh, that this person is going to go to one shul to, to check whether it's kosher or not. So I, I cannot call them and ask how you do this and that. They're not going to answer me. Uh, but uh, if you observe, like uh, some take modern, modern people, they, they take uh, the, the, the Torah to the women's section and they touch it with their hand. That's not proper. That's not proper. You understand? If it look, it's not proper. So needless to say, for women, so and even if a woman is nida, and she otherwise would not come close and touch, like in her like wildest dream, right? But now the, the Torah, like this stupid man, right, bring brings the Torah next to her face. So what she's going to do? You understand? So everybody is looking. All of the other women now looking at her, like what what she's she's going to do? She's not going to kiss the Torah. She's a picorous, so you understand? That's uh, that's a big problem. Um, so okay, and uh, and the men would not sit, and, and the women uh, were, were, were women used to sit, and uh, it's proper for for a woman to have a separate seat in the house, and men has a separate seat in the house. Uh, so the problem is with the food. I'm I'm going to, to explain what what the problem with the food that uh, well, when somebody eats from somebody else's plate, it uh, it it. it it connect it makes this uh, like um, I don't know, like uh, flirtation, right? So so she said she's taking a piece of uh, I don't know, chicken or potato from from his plate. That's uh, that's not good, okay. But uh, if um, if uh, he's not looking, for example, man went to a uh, bathroom or something, so she she can actually eat from his plate. Right? There is no problem. So after the fact, if if she's uh, left or it's proper for her to finish, but if he wants not not in her presence. Not from your plates. For example, they put it the, the food left over in container. Let's say, like after the fact, there is no problem for him to eat it. No problem. But some would say yes. So it's like uh, there is some impurity. So if, if if you can avoid it, it's good proper to avoid it. But after the fact, there is no problem. So that's uh, that's the thing. Okay, what else? Yeah. So, but uh, some some women like we had this. Uh, we did help you know some a woman asked me like she was very offended. She is from uh, this uh, feminist or something, right? So she said, uh, <laughs> what did she said? So about the mikvah, pure and pure. So I said, uh, are you Jewish? The first question doesn't doesn't make any difference. Uh, are you Jewish? I said absolutely. Have uh, the bi the biggest difference in the world is Jewish or not. So I said, if you're not Jewish, you you don't have this same purity. She said, oh, right. So non-Jewish women do not have this impurity, but Jew Jewish women they can be pure and impure. 
So, but uh, for non-Jewish, is a uh, non-Jewish woman, it's a uh, one status is uh, whatever status is normal. There, there is no no purity in impurity. And some, I'm, I'm going to use nice words, not uh, unlearned people, and even some of them in the shiva, they decided boys they can practice with non-Jews because why? Because there is no such impurity. You understand? So a Jewish girl, she's not allowed to go to the mikveh. Uh, because an, a non-married woman is not allowed to go to the mikveh, and no, no mikveh is going to allow her in. Right? That's, that's another thing, right? <laughs> but um, right, so so she's always nida, and then she she get married. So from 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 the time she she would have her period until the time uh, she's married, she's always nida, right? But are, are are we allowed to touch it? Absolutely. So a father would uh, give a blessing to, to her daughter and it's proper for him to, to put her, his hands on her head. Absolutely, that's proper. Is she Nida? Yes, yeah, she's Nida. Uh, is, is he allowed to touch her? Absolutely, 100%. You understand? So that's... Uh, or uh, is she allowed to... Uh, when she's Nida, is she allowed to, 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 to handle the kids? 100%. You understand? So, but uh, but some, some boys decided that uh, since that one does not have a uh, impure status, you understand? So we're going to practice, and it's like uh, it's like this is uh, uh, like I don't know if it's if you can say that the parallel uh, this uh, you using the dishes without uh, towel even one time. It's like people get it in their head from nowhere, from nowhere with this, uh, and unfortunately, unfortunately that that is uh, when some people are failing. Okay, and uh, and of course they, 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 they like. They, they they say it in a joking way, but I, I stop one guy. I said it's not a joke. You're normal, so it's actually like when you are with such a woman, so your soul is going to cut from uh, from this world and the other world to come. Don't don't think it's a light matter. It's actually in Hilchos uh, Yisrebia. Um, I think yeah. So yeah. Okay. So what else? Any other questions? Anybody? Man, I have a question. Yes, please. Is there, if a non-Jew, let's say a, a, a Jew, a, a, let's say a Jew in training, someone in conversion, yes, fail fulfill an obligation that if they had converted, they would be required to fulfill as a Jew. Mm -hmm. Is there a punishment for anything that converts do wrong while they're in conversion? Are they punished for failing to? Uh, fulfill uh, a Jewish life in any way, shape, or form, or mm -hmm. only after they come out of the mix? <laughs> That's a good question. So let me. Uh, it was it was uh, uh, not not clear connection, but let let me repeat the question. If if and you you correct me if I didn't get it right. So it's it's amazing question. So somebody is in the process of a conversion, right? So a person is trying to do everything, and uh, he failed and did not do something that. If he was not aware of that's one thing. That's uh, we're not talking about it. That's of course not. But if he was aware or she was aware of uh, some uh, mitzvah, and they did not do it properly or did not do it at all, uh, I, I would say that the best, if uh, the, there's no punishment for positive commandments for for violating positive commandments uh, besides two, but it, those two do not uh, relate to the to the um, to the. Um, Convert in, in tra training. Why? Because it's Pesach offering. You know, we don't have a Pesach offering, and the second is circumcision. So that's uh, out of the question. Uh, so we're talking about uh, the, the, the more practical example would be when uh, this uh, person violates a, a negative commandment. Negative commandment. Let's say a person ate something uh, not kosher. Right, so let's say, let's say, right. So is he going to be punished? No, he's not going to be punished because he's not obligated anyway. So he, the, the person obligates to 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 all of, to do all of these mitzvahs from the day that he or she dips into the mikvah. So he he or she becomes a Jew, and now he ob ob obligates to do everything. But it's same as uh, my example. I always give like uh, uh, a child is not obligated to do any mitzvahs as well. Right, so, so uh, until uh, until the bar bas mitzvah or bar mitzvah, but how can you explain, uh, accept, expect a person to do everything like uh, until today, until today's 
uh, to Tuesday, let, let's say to Tuesday, he's not out again. And to, uh, tonight, tonight he's turned 13. So uh, from tonight, he's obligated to do everything and he's going to do it. Absolutely not. That's why you need training. That's why uh, it's proper for a person in the in the training in a proper so uh, in the process of gear go minimum one year minimum better two years some that so a person gets used to used to used to and you you cannot accept everything so if you try to do everything you're going to collapse what is guarantee one hundred percent that's uh, that's a pretty good guarantee so but but you take when you take upon yourself gradual gradual gradual. After the end of the one year, two years, so you you're pretty comfortable. So if you if you if you're going to 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 deep into mikva tomorrow, so you you're not going to do anything different. Absolutely, you, you, like you you would live exactly the same life. You understand? The the, the only thing uh, is that you're not going to do is you're not going to violate Shabbos like intentionally. That's it. That's uh, that's the whole difference. So that's why. We, Right, we, we don't expect uh, somebody in the training uh, like to do everything, but we expect uh, like uh, gradually accept upon themselves uh, uh, like uh, more and more mitzvahs. For some people, they very slow. They need like uh, mitzvah to settle down, this and that, to get comfortable. So for them, it's going to take five years, nine years, ten, years, whatever, whatever it takes. If it uh, goes in the proper direction, that's uh, that's that's it. Understand? So the, the bottom line, there is no punishment. So Rabbi, what if someone approaches the convert and says, ah, oh, you're not doing this, you're not doing that. It's a violation of the Torah. Or maybe they strike them or hit them or try to harm them or try to punish them in some way, shape, or form. Is, what's the, is, is, that, is that person going to be punished? Of course, he's going to be. I mean, uh, that's uh, what 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 whatever that that person uh, does uh, is uh, he has a uh, right amount uh, zealousness, but he 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 uses it in in the wrong direction. So send them to me, and then I'm going to tell them how to use this, to be zealous. I mean, in, in a proper way. So right. So there, there are some people anti-Semites. Right? They're disabled. And. Are you like uh, somebody? Some of the, this lady said, "Are you proud of uh, of the action of such a such Jew?" I said, uh, "Look, if you if it bothers you so much, please find his email. Please, uh, please, uh, please find his contact and start sharing our lectures, right? So if you want to do something productive, so you you zealous, that's very good. But there is a time uh, time and place to be zealous. So I mean, uh, if, if this uh, Jew wants to help." So we can uh, be hiring, but uh, to 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 lash it on a convert, to so pretend like a, a convert in practice, that's uh, unfortunately that's uh, pick, picking up uh, the, the wrong buttons, basically. So send send them to us. We're going to talk to him nicely in a sign. So uh, so far, like uh, people left us uh, some nasty comments, and like. Uh, they, they found some misspells. I said, Baruch Hashem, very good. Thank you very much. You're, you're so diligent. Uh, I said, but did you, did you take the, the idea from, from the clip? Also, just uh, one mistake. But actually, if you want, uh, we would like, like love you to help us with, with the check before we release. Just uh, check over the grammar. How about that? So maybe I send this in, like uh, reply maybe 20 times over this year. None, none of them reply. None of them. So people are into their own ego. Understand? So it's uh, wrong zealousness. Okay, what else? Oh, yes, go ahead. Yeah, no, I was just going to say that I, I don't know if this is like your right perspective of it, but... Uh... Oh, sorry. I got another question. So, well, I was going to say, so how should the convert react to people who approach them and try to enforce the Torah when they don't have the permission to mm -hmm. uh, while they're in conversion? Um, how, how should the convert react to that side tell, telling them to listen to the lectures and stuff like that? I mean, what if they try to punish the, mm -hmm. the convert? I mean, exactly. and, and they act on the convert or do something physical or they touch something tangible that belongs to them, mm -hmm. what, what should the convert do in that context? So, so if some, 
if somebody is very noisy, right, and they push and tell you this, do this, do that, so you can always say, my rabbi uh, told me that. Okay, so I'm just following my rabbi. Okay, so when, when my rabbi decided for me to take it the next step, I'm going to take the next step. If you have any advice, so talk to my rabbi, his, his phone number. So, and uh, actually, I, I, I had this advice many, many times over the years. You know how many people call me? You know how many people? Nobody ever called me. The biggest rabbis of the community, they uh, rebuke my students. Nobody ever called me, right? Because uh, maybe I have something to answer. Maybe they, they know that they would be wrong. You understand? Maybe they, they don't know much. Maybe, I mean, they pick in uh, like, uh, like fights with the uh, wrong people. Yeah, you understand? So that's, that's always, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to according to, to the schedule that my rabbi gave me. He told me whatever he told me. So I'm not, uh, I'm not allowed to tell you, but if you want to consult with him, how, how to help me, okay, his, his phone number, uh, call him and, uh, and you to discuss. So, so far, guess what? Nobody ever, ever, I'm not sure. I mean, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm just giving this advice to all my students. So, but nobody ever called me, nobody ever, ever, right? From, uh, from different groups, nobody ever. So people, right? So that, that's now when you, when you want to help somebody, you, you, do, you, you do it through the kindness. So to say that I'm your friend, I wanna help you. So I, I think that you're going to the wrong, wrong direction and I want to help you, right? Because, because this and that, and I care about you. But if, for example, if I don't care about some other people, some of the people like low life, they talk in the, sh in the shul during the, the, the prayers, let's say, let's say. I mean, there is no, no such people in my shul, but sometimes there are clowns that come to my shul. Well, let's put it this way. Clowns that I don't know where they can come from, but they like to talk, right? Uh, so I have no intention, to, like, like when they're outside, I would shish them like inside, but outside, I'm not, I'm not going to talk to them. There is uh, nothing in common. You understand? So that's, uh, that's uh, how we, we have to treat the, these people. Tell them, call, call my rabbi, talk to him, and, uh, and, maybe, and maybe you two are going to, to come up with a better plan for me, maybe. Right? But if you want to help somebody, you do it nicely, you, you, and you be being sincere, Nobody, nobody, like it says it clearly in this generation, you, you don't even hit your kids, you don't yell at the kids. Most of the time it's not, it's going to be counterproductive. Now you, you, you try and with an with adult, yell at him, like uh, scream at him, like uh, rebuke him that he's uh, doing something wrong, that he's not even obligated to do, like, understand, that's a big issue. So what else? No, I was just going to say that I, uh, uh, it's okay to see the process of conversion as a flight simulator. Like, for example, the pilots uh, that want to be pilots instead of being put uh, on an aircraft because they're, of course, going to crash it. They are mm -hmm. put in a very realistic uh, simulator mm -hmm. that, of course, simulates everything uh, in regards to the plane so that they can crash it like safely. Mm -hmm. Uh, in order for that to practice, so mm -hmm. I don't know. I was thinking about this example. I don't know yes, it yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's a that's a good example. I mean, uh, so you you practice as as long as you need. Uh, when you feel comfortable, and when you feel confident, that's what uh, from from uh, from next Wednesday you you're ready to to live totally different life uh, life. And now you're. If, if you take this uh, your example as a pilot, so now I'm not going to fly it in a flight simulator. I can look at the window left and right. No, actually, in my, I have a big plane and there are 400 people in this plane. So I'm very, very responsible. So I cannot just do what I want and quit what I want. No, I have to finish the flight. You understand? There is no walking out of that room, right? In the simulator room. So you have to be careful. That's why... We have to see when a person is 100% ready. So that's uh, we allow them, and of course we ask the questions. So they, they must feel ready, like, and uh, then we only proceed to the next step. Uh, I have more. I have so many questions. Yeah. Okay. So let just go ahead. So go ahead. Uh, bye bye. If you have a Christian Bible, what should you do with it? 
Um, uh, you you can burn it if you want. You can throw it in the garbage, but but make make sure no nobody's going to get it. So the, the famous question is how can you do it because uh, there is uh, what is it? Uh, um, there is a four letter name and other names uh, they, they, they they copy. So uh, the, the thing is that they uh, when they wrote these names, right? It's actually they meant Yoshka. You know, understand? If you wanted to to bury it, like uh, dig a hole somewhere, that uh, you, you you can do it as well. So to to, to stay on the safe side, but uh, not uh, there is no such obligation. Thank you. You're welcome. So the, the the main thing that no nobody else would get it like uh, and use it because it's it's going to be on you like you put a stumbling block in front of these people. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, what else? Okay, Daniel, let's go to Daniel. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I was going to say that. Um. No, well, let, let's uh, yeah, let's let's leave it for for tomorrow. We did. Uh, it's over the time, so let's leave the last something which is for tomorrow. So let, let's see. Yeah, you're welcome. Anybody else have a question? Before we finish. Okay, so no problem. So very good. It was very productive. So let's stop here. So next time, uh, Bezras Hashem, I think uh, we're going to do a CM on this book. One of the many, Bezras Hashem. And uh, please join us tomorrow, uh, same time. Thank you very much. Good night. Thank you.